Welcome APIB students to a, hopefully I'm going to do my best to keep this a very brief discussion of periodic trends and the atom. And you're going to be doing an inquiry on this, so right now I'm just trying to give you an introduction to help you with your inquiry. All right, and the first thing what we want to do is take a look at size and I'm going to walk you through how we're going to going to justify sizes and then you're going to have to be able to justify the other properties that we'll be doing and again this is going to prepare you quite well I believe for that inquiry uh, so let's take a look first at an isoelectronic series isoelectronic means same configuration and so this was just a little bit of an inquiry. If we could do our electron configurations for these, we would notice that oxygen 2 minus is 1s2, 2s2, and then it would normally be 2p4. But we're asking for oxygen 2 negative, and that means we're going to add two electrons, and it becomes 2p6. If we did fluorine, we'd have 1s2, 2s2, 2p5. Again, it's fluoride, so we're going to add electron to that outer configuration. If we did sodium, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, and 3s1. Now, the sodium ion, that positive indicates it's has lost electrons. Remember, positive ions, metals are losers, so it would lose that electron. Magnesium, I, I hope you're noticing a trend here. Sorry about the Mimeo, it's really jumpy today. I don't know if it's because I've had too much coffee or what, but 2P6, and then we do 3S2 for magnesium ion, but again, Lose your outer S and P electrons for ions. Same thing. And I think you can see for aluminum, it'd be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, or 3p, excuse me, 3p1, 3p1. Now to become plus 3, it's going to lose all three of those. And you notice they all have the same electron configuration. Hence, we call them isoelectronic. But now let's take a look at the size. Even though they all have the same number of electrons, they're not the same size. And so what I like to do for this is look at the proton to electron ratio. Remember, protons are positive, electrons are, are negative. So there's a strong force of attraction here. The atomic number Z for oxygen is 8. It's simply your number of protons. So in the case of oxygen, I would have an 8. Now, if you notice, we have 10 electrons in each of these. 8 to 10 ratio. Here I have a 9 protons to 10. Now, wouldn't there be more attraction to a plus 9 than uh, there would be a plus 8. And realize these are all at energy level 2. So they're all the same distance, at, or energy level at least, so effectively the same distance. We're going to see that's actually not true. But since there's a tighter attraction, the radius decreases as those electrons seek to get closer to that more attractive force. Sodium would be an 11 to 10 ratio, and then magnesium would be a 12 to 10 ratio, and aluminum would be a 13 to 10 ratio. So those electrons are trying to get closer and closer and closer. So, you know, here in, in my adult world, this would be like trying to get closer to Justin Bieber. Eh, he's okay. 
but he's a celebrity. Some adults might want to get close to him. Now, as we get up to magnesium, there's a much stronger attraction. So the electrons are going to get closer. So that'd be like my husband. He's certainly a plus 12. Um, and now as we get to aluminum, we have plus 13. And guess who that is? Of course, that's good old Denzel Washington. And of course, we want to get closer and closer and closer to Denzel Washington. And so the radius of that ion decreases. So the net here is as you increase your proton to electron ratio, you increase the attraction. You always have to get down to that attraction to the nucleus and hence you decrease the radius of the ions that you're comparing. And this is for an isoelectronic series. Now let's take a look here at the next, which would be the atom. But before we do that, we have to talk about shielding. Uh, shielding is a critical effect for dealing with properties. And this is especially going to be key as we're going down a group. As you go down a group, we're going to increase this shielding effect. All right, so as we go down a group, you're going to increase shielding. There's not quite as much shielding across a period, but there's quite a bit of shielding down a group. So what happens is that in inner, what we call core electrons, shield the outer or valence electrons. Remember the valence or your outer S and P? We learned that earlier in the atom. So valence electrons from the full effect of the um, nucleus. So we often will talk, instead of a full uh, charge on the nucleus, we would talk about an effective nuclear charge. And your effective nuclear charge is going to be less than your original Z, which is your number of protons. And it's kind of like there's this force field in here that the core electrons are, are guarding or acting as a force field so the outer valence electrons simply can't feel the attraction. Now let's take a look at an analogy I think that would be helpful. So if this was the gorgeous and beautiful smiling Denzel Washington over here. And here's your wonderful old biddy, Dr. Leggett over here. If there's a lot of people in the way, these people are shielding Denzel from feeling the full attractive force that he would naturally experience if he was close enough to see my, you know, natural beauty and intelligence. So he's shielded, he's blocked from feeling that full effect and hence can't be as attracted to me as we, we all know he would be if he could actually meet me in person. So let's take a look then, one more here in addition to shielding. An atomic radius, what they do is they'll take diatomic or sometimes binary, um, once they know one of the diatomics, they can do it in a binary, and they measure the distance center to center. Half of that is considered our atomic radius. Remember that elusive little electron, the edges get a little fuzzy out here, and so it can be a little harder to read. And so if, but they can measure a bond length, which is center to center, and when they divide that in half, when these are similar elements, like this could be fluorine and fluorine, okay, then they can measure that radius. So that's how it's measured. And you notice it's typically measured on the order of picometers, which is 10 to the minus 12th meters. So that's about 0 0.180 nanometers if I'm doing that in my head right. Okay, so let's take a look at one of our trends. 
Um, but before we do that, I'm going to go ahead and stop this video for you. It's already almost at 10 minutes and I'm going to keep the other one. I bet I can get it to under 10 minutes. So until you're back to the next one, this is signing off.